Minnesota's governor and now the Democratic vice presidential nominee, Tim Walz. His handling of the George Floyd riots and policing have come into greater focus since he was tapped as Kamala Harris's running mate. Host of Sunday Report here on Newsmax, John Glasgow, spoke to the current Minneapolis police chief about the state of the department today. Chief O'Hara, thank you so much for taking time here to sit down with us. Uh, I know this has been two years, roughly, that you've been on the job and there's been a lot of change. Uh, walk me through what you've had to do with this department. Since the time I've gotten here, it is, it is definitely different. There's no question. Um, when I first arrived here, um, it was pretty striking um, just how much hurt and how much pain uh, people in the city, the residents, as well as the police officers had. Um, I don't know if I'd say it had, it had bottom, bottomed out at that point for sure. Um, you know, the, the police officers who remained in this department uh, through thick and thin refused to turn their backs on the residents of this city. Um, our members came into work day after day wondering which one of their, you know, former co-workers were just not going to show up the next day. Um, they, they endured through that while members of their family, in some cases their children, um, were quite frankly harassed and ridiculed because of what mom or dad did for a living. Um, so. It's been incredibly traumatic for the cops, as well as for the residents who lived through the city burning, um, just uh, an exponential increase in serious street crime. Um, it's been terrifying and traumatic for everyone involved. And we're about 40% below sworn staffing what it was prior to 2020. Uh, we have half the number of investigators we used to have. At the same time, you know, crime has exponentially increased. Our investigators are solving more and more cases than they ever have before. Mm -hmm. uh, but the caseloads are tremendously higher than when we had twice as many investigators. Um, so I think it, it really needs to be told just the incredible work that the officers are doing. Uh, and just now today, thankfully, two years later, we're in a position where this year the department is not going to get any smaller. We're on pace to hire more people than we're losing, mm -hmm. which is very, very positive. How do you balance the social justice, which the movement was in 2020, to the law and order that needs to happen in communities to make sure that they're safe? Sure. I think the problem here was uh, just across the board, uh, there had been a, an acceptance or a normalization at the level, the outrageous level of, of serious crime and shootings and violence that had been happening here. Um, and, and I think people here just didn't understand that, uh, you know, good policing, constitutional policing, and good policing going against holding people accountable that are causing, you know, violence and, and harm in the community go hand in hand. That's what the police in America do. The stats do show that crime is up. Um, what do you attribute it to? Uh, in June of 2020, uh, there were almost as many shooting victims in one month as what had been normal in this city for half a year. Mm. That's how dramatically crime increased uh, here uh, in 2020. And we're dealing with the after effects of that. And I told them, you know, we're not going to normalize, you know, the level of violence that we're going to have. We're going to respond. We're going to put some urgency back into this. Uh, and that's, that's what we've done since the beginning. And we're still we're still above what was normal prior to 2020. It's, it's making sure that we're, we're, we're like a surgeon, focused as precisely as possible on the people who are causing the most harm here. Repeat offenders. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, the police officers here have not felt supported uh, over the last few years here. I think we're finally starting to turn a corner to change at least some of that perception. Um, but I think there's no, well, I know there's no question uh, that the cops didn't feel supported um, by the own brass in the police department, let alone city leaders. Um, I think that's common in police departments in general to, to have that kind of sentiment. You cannot abolish a police department in a major American city. That's completely ridiculous. You need law and order. Absolutely. What makes you get up in the morning and, and, and put on that uniform? The quality of the men and women that are in this police department. Um, some of the best in the profession in this country. Very nice conversation there. John Glasgow brought us that moment.